Hi there and welcome to my channel. So in today's video we have a hydroponic pepper plant here. This is a sweet bell pepper plant that I have going in the cracky hydroponic method. You can see here we have some beautiful little peppers forming here on the plant. Uh, they're coming along nicely but I just want to give this a good pruning so that we can kind of cut back on some of those blooms that are coming so that it can focus some of its energy on these peppers here to, so we can get nice big peppers. We also need to check out the nutrient water and see if it needs a refresh and set that up as well. So let's get started on pruning our pepper plant and giving it a nutrient refresh. So to start off, I'm going to make sure that the scissors I'm using have been sterilized. I use these a lot for, for trimming different plants and I don't want to transfer any diseases in between the plants. So it's always a good idea to give them a good cleaning. This is a, a scissor cleaning brush that you can put in there to kind of get all the little gunk off your scissors. Sometimes they get a little sticky with different things. So just clean that off. And then I just use some rubbing alcohol to help clean off those blades a little bit. So now that we've got some clean sterilized scissors, we're ready to start the pruning. I just want to bring you in a little bit closer so you can kind of see what we are dealing with here. What I usually do is I just kind of find where the peppers, such as these little ones, are starting to come out. And I see that I have about five of them already forming here pretty nicely. So I'm just going to trim back some of the blooms that are close by because I don't want them to try to start forming and take away some of that energy that these little peppers are going to need so we can get nice big size peppers. It's amazing how many peppers will start blooming here and trying to grow but I cut back a few of the little tiny ones like this one. So this one will keep going but these three Keep forming and then just trim a few of those leaves around here. The next thing I usually do is then do some cutting off the top. Just as you can see here, I'm going to actually take one whole branch off here. I just cut it near the, the main stem. So of course that's got some blooms on it that we're gonna try and bloom and grow, but I just removed that just to kind of cut it back. And then I do a little bit of topping. So just go to the tops here and cut back a few more of those blooms. You can even pinch them off with your finger a little bit. Just have a look for any leaves that aren't looking too healthy just pull them back so basically what i've done here is pretty much slowed down or stopped any more blooming and uh, fruit forming right at this time so that these five peppers that I got going here can keep growing. So by the time these peppers have grown and they're ready to harvest there will already be new growth starting on the top of this pepper and more peppers will start blooming and forming. So, so this is the process I use just to help with the growth of the first round of peppers here. As long as you can keep your pepper plant alive, it will keep growing and blooming and producing fruit. So this pepper plant here is one that I took from my outdoor garden this fall. So I actually pulled it out of the dirt, washed off all the roots, 
and gave it a good bath in some soapy dish water just to make sure that there was no uh, bugs or insect eggs or anything coming in on the plant that would infest my house. And then I set it up in this crack key method. Then once I have it set up in the net cup here, the roots found their way to the bottom of the net cup and got to that nutrient water that I have set up. And this plant just took off, started blooming and flowering, and we have peppers. So there's lots of little air roots here around the bottom of the net cup you'll see, which is part of the cracky method and why it works so well. So these roots here are absorbing the moisture and the nutrients. These little roots here are taking up oxygen that the plant needs. So you always want to make sure your nutrient water does not drown out these air roots. You don't want to fill your container too full because the plant needs that air to thrive. So I just want you to have a look inside the container here so you can see what the nutrient water looks like. You can see, but it is down to about an inch or two left in this container. So when these plants get to this level where they are blooming and fruiting, they take up a lot of nutrients. And I just want to do a refresh on this nutrient and make sure that we have a blend of nutrients that is suitable for the fruiting and flowering stage. So for a plant like this, like the pepper plant that is gonna be growing indoors here in this method, probably for several months, right up until springtime when I decide to either dispose of it or maybe I might even try transplanting it back out into my outdoor garden. So those roots tend to get a little bit kind of yellowy and you know, not looking real great. So I like to give them a treatment while I'm doing the nutrient refresh. And to do that, I just have a, another container here with just plain water in it. And I'm going to put about five milliliters of hydrogen peroxide in here. And that will give those roots a little bit of a treatment. So the peroxide just gives those roots a bit of a cleaning and disinfectant so that kind of deters any disease or bacteria building up on the roots and keeps them healthy. So I have about five mils here of the hydrogen peroxide that I'm putting into the water. I just take the lid off here with the roots and just set it in here and just let it sit there while I do a nutrient refresh on this container. So the first thing I'm going to do is go and dump this out, give it a good rinse, and then we will add a new blend of nutrient water. So I'm using a three-part blend here for my nutrients in my hydroponics. You can use, you know, a one-part or a two-part for your hydroponics, it's up to you. I like to use the three part because you kind of have more control on what types of nutrients you are feeding your plants and based on what stage of growth that they are at. So with this, we are at the blooming and fruiting stage. So following the measurements on the back of your manufacturer's container, it will tell you how much of each of these three parts you need to put in for that stage. So I've already mixed it up. It's called the blooming and fruiting stage. Then I also add in some Cali Magic. I like to add five mils of this to my mixture as well. It gives it a little bit of that extra calcium and magnesium. So I've got the container all cleaned out. I got my nutrient mix all put together and we're just gonna fill it up about halfway. So before we put our pepper plant back into this container, I'm just going to use these to do an EC test and a pH test on the mixture here just to see if that EC level is in the range that we want it to be for the pepper plants. And we want to make sure the pH range is where it's supposed to be so that those plants can properly absorb those nutrients. So we always start off with checking the EC first. So for peppers, the optimal EC range is somewhere between 2.0 to 4.0. And just looking at my meter here, it's coming out at 2706. 
So I just put a decimal after the first number. So that EC level is at about 2.7. So it's in kind of the lower end of the EC range that's optimal for peppers, which is fine. I think I'll just leave it there. If you wanted to bump up your EC level, you can always just mix a stronger batch of nutrients up and add it to your container. But I'm just going to leave it at the 2.7 range. Now we're going to check the pH level. So the optimal pH level that you want your nutrient water to fall into is 5.5 to 6.5. So that's the range that is the best for these plants so that they can absorb those nutrients that are in the water. So if it happens that your pH is too high or too low, then the plants will struggle to absorb those nutrients and you will end up with not a very healthy plant. So with the tap water that I use, I normally end up with a pH level that is a little bit high. So I usually have to adjust my pH down a little bit. So my pH is coming out at about 6.6, was just a little bit high. So we're gonna just adjust it with some pH down just to see if we can bring that down a little bit. So a high pH means it's a little more acidic than the plants prefer. So we are going to use this to bring down that acid level. I usually start off with just a few drops, two or three mils into my water. Give it a stir. And then we can just give it another test to see if that pH level has come down. So it's looking like my pH is now going to be close to 6 or maybe just a little bit under that 6.0. So that's good. That's in that 5.5 to 6.5 range. So I think we are good to put our plant back into the solution. So if you find you're still struggling to learn everything you need to know to start growing indoors hydroponically, I'm excited to let you know that I have a online course soon to be launched showing you all the step-by-steps that you need to know to get started with indoor hydroponic growing. So this course is going to contain over 90 minutes of step-by-step -step tutorials that you can follow at your own pace. It'll show you all that you need to know as far as equipment to get started, how to set up a system such as this, growing a whole variety of lettuces. I go into detail on how to properly mix nutrients as well as step-by-step -step explanation about EC measurements and pH measurements and why they are important. Plus there'll be some additional resource documents provided in this course. So if you wanna get in on the introductory price and be the, notified when my course is ready to launch, be sure to subscribe to my Little Garden newsletter below and I will notify you when the course is ready. So these roots have had a little bit of a cleaning treatment here in this water and peroxide. So hopefully that will keep them healthy. I just transfer it over back into its container. So we are ready to put this plant back into the grow tent and watch these peppers grow. I hope you found this video helpful and that you will hit that like button, leave me a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. I will keep you updated on the growth of my peppers along with all my other plants here that I'm growing hydroponically. So thank you for watching. We will see you on the next video.